Welcome already to our first attendees. Welcome to our webinar from the special series of the subject webinars, where we are going to talk about studying MBA in Germany as an umbrella topic. And so uh, my name is Georgi. As always, I'm the co-host slash co-moderator or during these types of webinars. And for those who are not familiar with the Zoom's uh, webinar setting, so to say, let me briefly go through some details regarding that. So you can see the Q&A button just next to the chat button. So this is the main communication line, if you wish, between us and you. It is already open and you can send in your questions using the Q&A button. As many questions as you would like to, of course, ideally related to our study programs that are being presented today, and I will introduce them also. And then uh, after the presentations are done, we will have a live Q&A session where your questions will be addressed by our guests. So that's why it's a unique and great opportunity for you guys to ask your questions and get the best possible answers from our guests. Uh, okay, and also you can see the chat button. You cannot use the chat yourself, but keep an eye on the chat, please, because some links or some contact details will be also sent to you in the chat via the chat button. That being said, let me now jump into my short presentation for today before we move to our guests. Let me tell, introduce to you webinar agenda. So we have uh, from OHA M Professional School, we have Professor Dr. Bernd Huma, and he will present the program MBA in general management for business background and non-business background uh, interested applicants, future applicants. And we also have some guests uh, from OHA M who will also be um, helping us with answering the questions and introducing also some another aspects of studying, for example, in Ohio Professional School. We are also supposed to have our guests from Hochschule für Wirtschaft and Umwelt, Nürtingen Geislingen, but because of the personal reasons, she will not be able to be present today and this webinar will be rescheduled. Please keep an eye on our webinar page for that. So who is behind today's webinar? For those who don't know, it is my German university and we are Germany's large, largest database when it comes to English taught study programs. We have over 2,600 degree programs listed in our database, both on bachelor level and also on master's level. We also have some short courses and language courses listed in our study finder. Our main goal is to help international students like you on their way towards studying in Germany. And we do this, provide this assistance in through three key ways. One of the ways is Again, our study finder. So when you, this is a, a demo version of our study finder, but when you go to our web page and on the top left, in the top left corner, you click on study finder, you will be able to see all of the options. The huge, I mean, the large version of the study finder with huge amount of the filters that will you can use and which will help you to find the best fitting program for you, best fitting in terms of your interest, in, ter in terms of your background, in much quicker way than usually. Uh, the second way of helping you is through, organize, uh, through writing up articles. We have oh, more than 150 comprehensive articles on the topics related to studying in Germany. For example, APS certificate, various visa issues, blocked account issues, letter of motivation writing, CV writing, and so on and so forth. All these topics, uh, we make a deep dive, and I kindly invite you also to take, the, uh, take a look at these articles. And of course, they are for free. And last but not least, we also organize webinars. We have approximately 150 webinars per year uh, on different topics. It can be general studying in Germany topic. It can also be like application strategies in Germany or uh, for to apply for the German university scholarships, uni assist, and also the subject webinars like the one that you're attending right now, but on different subjects. So today's umbrella topic is MBA, but we also have the webinars on studying, for example, physics in Germany, philosophy in Germany, political science, sociology, et cetera, et cetera. All of the webinars that are already planned, you can sign up for them uh, on our webinars page and they're you can sign up for them for free and attend them also, of course, for free. Uh, yes, and uh, regarding our team, we're based in Hamburg in Northern Germany, but we are also uh, all over Germany and also all over the world. That's we are, which why we are also counseling in a different languages. Okay, so for those who are also interested in uh, German taught study programs, I would suggest you also to take a look at the Hochschule Kompass. There you might find some interesting programs related um, to studying MBA. Uh, but if you are more into English taught study programs, then my German university and our study finder should definitely be your stop because we have over 150 uh, degree programs uh, on the MBA topic. And um, you can see most of them are in English only, meaning that you do not need any knowledge of German to get into these programs and then successfully complete them. 
Uh, also, uh, there are some subject pages that we have for the for those who don't know, do not know what to expect when it comes to studying uh, this or that subject in Germany. So maybe you are interested in general setting. What are the universities that are offering, for example, in this case, MBA to study in Germany? What are the rankings of these universities? What are the tuition fees? What are the various requirements? So all this kind of generic information to have it as a bigger picture is provided on our subject pages that you, you are also invited to take a look. Also, uh, in Germany, what I also would like to say that in Germany, there are two key types of universities. One is Universität type of university. Another one is University of Applied Sciences. In Germany, it can, has some variations in namings. And uh, the key focus and key, uh, key difference, I would say, between them for now is in focus. So in general, when it comes to Universität type of university, the focus lies more on research and theory. And in case of University of Applied Sciences, the focus goes more onto the application and practice, again, in general. Uh, and uh, one suggestion from our side, when you are searching for the programs using our study finder, please be flexible with wordings a little bit. Not, don't be uh, too rigid in this regard to make sure that you are aware that you can find all of the programs, for example, that are being offered uh, in the MBA realm, and you then can, have, uh, can make an informed decision, which is crucial, of course, for choosing the right program and then for your future career, professional career. Okay, so that being said, let us move now to Ohio Professional School. Let us move now to Professor Dr. Bernd Huma, and he will, as I said, talk about MBA in general management. It is both for business background students and non-business background students. And you can also see where it's located uh, in the, I would say, southern part of Germany. And then with that being said, I'm stopping my screen share and inviting Professor to take the floor. It's Ohm uh, Hochschule. Uh, that's from the physician from the physics uh, famous researcher where you uh, measure electric resistance in Ohm. Um, this, this, this guy was 200 years ago president of our university when the university already was 50 years old or something. So welcome from my side. Uh, I'll give you a very brief uh, introduction in our program. And then uh, one of our students, uh, Markus Ratzesberger, will give you also a statement from his perspective. I'm not going to know now what he's going to say, so <laughs> hope it will be positive. And I think so. And then I would like to have as much time as possible for dialogue, uh, uh, answering your questions and sub-questions so that we have best um, take advantage of our time. So, um, Gorgi just showed it. That's my first slide. Where's Nuremberg? Nuremberg is in the heart of Europe, in the middle. Yeah. So, it's about uh, uh, three hours uh, from Berlin with the speed train. It's about one hour ten to Munich with the speed train. Uh, so, it's it's really in the middle. It's in the southern part. It's in Bavaria. Bavaria is one of the richest uh, federal federal states in Bavaria. So about our, our university. So Gogi, you mentioned the average size of an of an, um, University of Applied Sciences about 5,000, that number was uh, new to me. So we have more than 13,000 students in our university. It's one of the largest universities of applied sciences in Germany. We're a full scope. Uh, so, uh, Yes, the focus is on technical. We have certain faculties, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, chemical engineering, uh, information, uh, IT. Uh, but we have also a faculty of business, which I'm a member from, with about 3,500 students and a big faculty of our social sciences with about more than 2,500. So we offer a wide variety of programs. And we're very research active. So also it's correct that normally universities of applied science are more practice oriented. We are that. We also do a lot of research, though so the game is changing. So we are also gonna get the right for PhD. Uh, uh, it's it's in a few, in short time, I would say. We are pretty international, the university, uh, as well as our program. And so we have more than 200 years tradition. Now I'm going to talk about our business school. Um, the point is that if you do postgraduate education and your students are 
partially working with parallel. You need you are in a different business. You are in a service business. So you have to finance yourself by tuition fees. You have to compete with private universities and international universities. And you have to be service oriented. And it has to be in English and international. And all this needs a dedicated organization. And that's why we founded more than 20 years ago the Old Professional School. 2002, I was the first managing director. And so we have a specially dedicated organization for MBA programs for postgraduate education. Nevertheless, we are part of the university and that we are fully integrated in the university, same legal entity. And we also have, of course, accreditation, quality assurance, all these kind. Uh, we are part of the university. Uh, we have a strong focus, of course, of applied management now. So our students partially come from practice, are working in parallel. Most of our teachers, our professors are coming from practice, also parallel working uh, um, in practice. So myself, for example, I'm working in, as a consultant for strategy and sustainability since many, many years, parallel to my professorship. And of course, we have a lot of projects and cooperations with companies and we're dedicated to service. And this is not just the empty buzzword, that's our day-to-day -day goal. Maybe a, word, a few words about myself. I have a background in business. I've spent uh, many years in industry, uh, in international companies and in various management positions. I also spent seven years in a top management consultancy, Orland Berger. So I have a consulting background. And now I, I'm since 2009 professor for sustainable management in our faculty of business. So I'm teaching sustainability management. I'm also teaching strategic management. And I'm also the academic uh, director of our two MBA programs. So let's talk about MBA. So first to say uh, that in Germany, especially in Germany, many universities offer programs which are called MBA, but they are not two MBAs. They are a Master of, uh, of Arts in Marketing or a Master of Arts in Logistics or a Master of Arts in Finance, and they call themselves MBA because they think it sounds better. Yeah? You need to know that uh, internationally, MBA is clearly defined according to the, to the uh, UK and United States MBAs. It's a clear degree in general management, so uh, not a a very high specialization on one subject, such as strategy or marketing or, or logistics. It's really general management. It's a very strong focus on leadership and development of your personality, so person, soft skills, uh, social competences. It's also with us, uh, integrates a personal coaching where you have access to uh, coaches which get on a 4i basis uh, coaching, which is not part of the curriculum, but it's an additional service. You think it's important. And so it's very practical oriented. It's really international. So roughly 80% of our uh, students come from, have a, a background from another country, either are born in Germany and their parents come, come from India and very much students come also from India, from Iran, from China, from Afghanistan, from South America, from US to study with us. It's 100% English, everything. Even in the, in the coffee break, students talk English because they just use, are used to it. Um, of course, we have also uh, international professors. We try to integrate guest professors, for example, in the lectures. And it's it's really a, a, a personal experience. So class sizes are from five to thirty-five. So it's normally enough room for personal contact with it, with the professors. And uh, we have more than 20 years experience with MBA. This is nothing for UK or United States, but this is a lot for Germany. Yeah. So that's basically our offer. We have customized program for everybody. So we whether we have a first academic education in business, that we call that business background. So you studied business administration or economics or you have a non-business background, so you studied, studied engineering or architecture or medicine or law or whatever, IT. Uh, and for those students, we offer a dedicated first semester, which gives them a kind of 
crash course in, in business administration in order to, to, to put them in a position to participate with the other students in the main lectures of the MBA. And also we offer not only business and non-business background, we also offer full-time and part-time. I, I don't like the, the term part-time. It's, it's better described as parallel to the job. So for example, Markus is working full-time and he's doing next to his job. And we have also students who come to us for just studying and they do it nothing else and they do it more intensively and maybe then they get an internship and, and a job and they make it also part-time. All these students join the same lectures, but the intensive program, they have maybe five evenings a week a lecture and the part-times have about three evenings a week a lecture. So it's, it takes a little bit more time. They have more time to do it. And it's of course, dedicated to the needs. We do it since 20 years, so we know how much workload a student can, can carry besides his job. Yeah? And we take care that the, the, the holidays are free and, and so forth. You also have to write a master's thesis. The price is the same whether you're full-time or part-time. It's just the first between 3,000 euro for the non-business because you have this extra semester which costs us extra money. It's a balanced education. Of course, you get all this classic stuff like strategic management, international marketing, digital business, sustainability management, supply chain management, international finance, and so forth. But this is not enough to make you in a, put you in a position to become a good manager. So you need other skills, soft skills. You need an international communication competence to work and talk with different cultures. Business ethics, something we consider is very important. Social competence, practical leadership training, moderation, mediation, personality development, all these things. Because this together makes excellent leadership skills. And that's what an MBA should look like. As we see it, should be a balanced education, hard skills and soft skills. So in a nutshell, our MBA, it's really international. It's 100% English. It's balanced, hard skills, soft skills, is with a really renowned and practical experience teaching stuff. We have a dedicated organization, which is really, I think, important. We have customized program for any need, whether you're business or non-business, full-time or part-time. I think we, we do a good job, sorry to say. <laughs> I think we do, we do so. Uh, so we have quality and we have yeah, a lot of students from any background. Uh, maybe a word about classroom teaching versus online classes, because I've seen in the chat somebody looking for a, a distance learning program. Uh, we have done distance learning and online teaching, of course, during the pandemic. Pandemic, But we, we are really saying it's better, it's higher quality, and it's better for the development of the students if you have a classroom teaching. And therefore, we think we should continue with classroom teaching. And of course, we use all the online media. We have a, a blended learning platform and everything, but we say there's nothing better than a personal face-to-face -face contact between lecturers and students and among students, because you buy not only an MBA, you buy a network. And how can you network if you're just a part member in Zoom? And uh, But you can network if you sit next to each other and have a coffee break together. Uh, regarding accreditation and ranking, um, we've been there has been a ranking from uh, by CHE uh, Zentrum für Hochschulentwicklung, um, and we've received top grades. Uh, number one in Germany for applied knowledge partnership, and what I'm more proud of is number three worldwide. And we've also got excellent assessments in uh, continuous professional development, regional engage engagement, and publications research with industry. Of course, we are accredited. Next accreditation is scheduled for the first quarter 2024. So the continuous quality assurance and improvement process. And last but not least, the MBA is not just studying. The MBA is having fun, making, getting friendships. And uh, you hear some, see some pictures from our annual Christmas party from the graduation ceremony uh, of official uh, for events from our alumni club, summer barbecue or whatever. So this is also part of it. And uh, it's much more 
personal than a normal academic program as you may have uh, been used to in your first academic education. So it's totally different from what, what I experienced in our university and it's totally different what our bachelor's and master's in the normal faculty experience. It's much more personal. Hopefully there comes a point in time where you have new graduation. And that's it from my side. Uh, if you want to have more uh, information, just contact us. Leah is, uh, they're both sick today, Leah Bianca Hommel, or just take my first name and my last name with UE, please, and then add TH minus number. You can also contact me directly. And I think Marcus is going to invite you also for LinkedIn contact for further questions after this event. So this was my part. I'm stopping the screen sharing and uh, uh, giving the word to one of our students, Markus Ratzesberger. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to talk about my experiences so far um, in this MBA course. Um, I am born in Nuremberg, so I am actually a, a regional. Um, I can say that I'm the only one, basically. Um, as the professor mentioned before, we are an international program. So for me, it's great. Um, I know everything because I am from Nuremberg, but I get to meet a lot of new people. Um, I'm currently in my third semester. Um, or well, starting my third semester now, which uh, should be my last one. Uh, still have to write my master thesis then, of course. Um, as mentioned before, I am working full time. I am actually in a managerial position right now. I'm working for uh, the sixth, uh, no, seventh biggest energy supplier in Germany. Uh, I am their deputy head of the metering point operations, which is not important today, just for you to know that uh, I do have... Uh, a busy job um, and I'm still able to finish that program. Uh, this is maybe just to reassure you that it's definitely possible. Um, all in all, um, just to summarize, uh, I'm going a bit more in detail than later, but uh, just to summarize, I have to say that um, the experience so far was 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 really nice. Um, we, we obviously learned a lot. Um, there is theory, there is practice, uh, there is new contacts, networking, as the professor said. Um, for me, it was uh, a bit of a gap between my bachelor's and now my master's. So my bachelor's, uh, I finished them six years ago. Um, and I was a bit anxious to get back into this whole studying thing. You know, you have been working uh, for a few years, uh, then getting back to university. Um, I didn't know how this would play out, uh, especially as I uh, still work full time. Uh, but all in all, um, the start into the program was, was really smooth. Um, introduction was nice. Uh, everything was explained in the beginning, of course, um, how administration works, um, how the classes would work. Um, we have, uh, I would say, I, I don't know if that's correct, but we have a, a modern building, uh, which was renovated probably just a few years ago from at least how it looks like. Um, which is really nice because uh, we are close to the, mm, I would say, the main building of the university, but we have our own facility, uh, which is helpful. Um, it's, it's a bit smaller. Um, you, you don't have crowded places. Um, you have space to study if you don't want to study at home. Uh, you can meet for group work there um, or just a few minutes before class maybe to, to meet your friends, uh, share a few stories. Um, there's free coffee for everyone, just saying that. And um, no, uh, it's it's really nice. It's a friendly, open place. Um, for example, Leah is always there if you have questions, if there's any concerns, um, you can talk to her. She's uh, super helpful. And yes, uh, the, the whole start into it was was actually quite easy. And then, of course, um, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it is an effort that you have to make. But um, if you decide to start an MBA, I'm quite sure that you're all aware that it's not just handed to you. Uh, you will have to study, you will have to write exams, um, but it's not just written exams. And that's something that I, I really like actually, um, as mentioned before, it's practice oriented. So um, in some courses, you don't actually have a written exam. You uh, do instead a presentation, uh, a project with a company, for example. Um, which is uh, also a great experience. Um, I've been with my employer, although in different positions, but I've been with my employer now for seven years. 
and uh, getting the chance now in this program to work with other companies um, was a great insight to learn on like how they are operating. So these projects were great. Um, and yeah, presentations are interesting, um, especially with Professor Hümmer. We had uh, a really interesting experience, which was more or less uh, you starting up your own business um, and you have to convince him that your business idea is good, which is not easy, I can say, but um, lots of interesting feedback, um, as he mentioned before, um, coming from top management consulting, we got some really interesting input, um, learned a lot here again. And yeah, the, the international atmosphere is good. Um, you learn about new cultures. Um, one example, for example, we had, uh, or we have a colleague uh, uh, from Iran. She's working for a Chinese company and me being a German working for a German company, I learned a lot from her how different uh, work is around the world. So this is something that's super interesting. Um, now, a little advertisement for our city. Nuremberg is also a beautiful city to live. So um, a lot of Indian colleagues, for example, currently um, say that uh, they really enjoy the city. Um, they enjoy the surroundings. So also that is part, of course, of the MBA program is where you live, where you stay. And uh, Nuremberg certainly has a lot to offer here. Uh, what else is there? Um, yeah. The fact that the, the classes actually take place in person um, is, in my opinion, a, a big pro to the program. Um, discussions are more intense. Um, people have to participate. Um, you get to discuss with your professor more in detail or maybe even after the classes a little bit, uh, the subject. So in my opinion, and, and that was actually a, yeah, a major point why I decided for the program is the fact that you can go to class you meet people and it's a, it's a more intense experience than if you were just to sit in front of a laptop, so to say. Um, of course, there were exceptions. Um, we had a colleague that was sick or someone who was uh, going abroad for a day. They were allowed to join uh, in exceptions um, digitally to classes if that's in accordance with the professor. It's just going to be exceptions, but it's possible. So don't be afraid um, if you, I don't know, a little bit sick, you don't make it to class, you're still able to join digitally. But all in all, classes are um, are in person. And like I said, I really like that. Um, what else have I written down that could be of interest to you? Um, yeah, it is, um, it is certainly something that already shows in my work now personally. Um, it, whether it's the experience from, from other people that they shared with me or uh, something that you, in fact, just learned in a class. Um, it, it's interesting to see that it already shows in my work um, how I do things. Um, certain things have changed. I see that um, I approach certain things differently. So it is something that, or the program is certainly something that you are able to apply. Um, Something that changed me probably most, if I just uh, can pick maybe one subject, is uh, the subject of sustainability. Uh, I have to say probably um, in the beginning of the course, I was discussing a lot with the professor, um, which in fact, I, I'm wrong here. He's not a professor, he's a, a teacher. He's actually head of sustainability for a bigger uh, company around here, an international um, organization. And um, in the beginning, I'm, I'm relatively cost-driven, numbers-driven in my position. And um, yeah, he was able actually to change me here a bit. Um, so it is certainly something where you take away a lot from the program. And um, yeah, you get new perspectives on, on certain topics. And all in all, for me, it's a, a really enjoyable experience. It is lots of work. Um, you will have to work hard if you want good grades. It's not something that's just handed to you, but it is certainly possible. You will not be working alone. You have your, uh, your fellow um, classmates, you have the professor, and um, yeah, it's possible if you want to succeed. That's how I would conclude the whole thing. Maybe I, have to, I, I may add two things. There's no, there's no duty to participate in the lectures. So basically, in most lectures, yes. students are free to decide. Nobody blames you if you cannot come. The only thing is, if you want to uh, 
participate anyhow because you are not able to participate because you got sick or you have a business trip we offer this additional service of get going online in parallel yes. but it's not an obligation to to be at any yes. uh, lecture and it's second uh, uh, with sustainability i mean i'm professor for sustainable management since 15 years so i i would say i easily could give this lecture but i selected uh this guy mm -hmm. because he's head of a, a three billion euro uh, a company yes. and he knows every day how the struggle is between sustainability and the numbers. And so he can teach much, much better the subject than I could do. And so that's what we mean with practical orientation, that you get really up-to-date information from the field, from, from, from practice. Yeah. No, and uh, as the professor said, um, if you have any questions, I love to uh, stay in touch with people. Just contact me on LinkedIn. You see my name here, I think, um, up there. Uh, so if you want, you will find me on LinkedIn. Just contact me. And um, yeah, I can share more of the experience that I've had so far. And of course, there's also a LinkedIn contact from our uh, own professional school. Also a good way of contacting us. I think that's it. And we are handing over to Georgie. And he's moderating the Q&A session. So we see a lot of questions. And I'm looking forward to answer it. Great. First of all, Professor, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, for, for your input. And Marcus, also thanks a lot. Always appreciate it to see the insider information as well. Okay, now, uh, as Professor said, we have time for the Q&A to cover all the questions. Uh, hopefully we will do that. Let me start, let me follow the list actually. So let me read out the question from Caro. Hi, when there is a business, uh, when there is a business school affiliated with a university, how does it work in Germany? Who issues the diploma? What about accreditation? So, um, as I said, we, we, we decided to have a dedicated organization for postgraduate. That's that why we found that the business school 20 years ago, because we can do a much better job in a dedicated organization than in the normal faculty business. Nevertheless, of course, we are part of the university. So our uh, exam regulations, our quality assurance, accreditation, the, 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 the issuing of the diplomas and the master degrees, it's all done by the university. We are integral part of the university. And our president of you know, signing the, the certificates and everything. So we are fully integrated in this university. So it's a classical university degree from a state university. It's just that we can offer better service if you have it done in a business school. And so I think also it's better to have 30 students in a class English than we have 3,000 and it's anonymous. And there's also a reason why we use a dedicated organization. Uh, of course, and our degrees are recognized as a state university masters, uh, classical master is recognized everywhere. In every member state of Lisbon Convention, there's about up to 150 countries or something. Okay, great. Thank you, Professor. And with that, you also address the second question from uh, Thierry. And it was the question regarding whether it will be recognized in Denmark and Netherlands. So the answer is clear, yes. Uh, and yet, Thierry, we will be, we'll share the presentation. And when we get from our guests, we'll share also the presentation with all registered participants and you will get it also on your email. No worries in this regard. Uh, okay, what MBA is currently in most demand for a consulting management career in IT? Very general question, would you like to address? Um, so in IT, uh, that's the point. So I have been a, a top management consultant. Roland Berger has been number two behind McKinsey and Company when I joined them uh, 20 years ago. Uh, but we have not been specializing on IT. Yeah, And so uh, a company like McKinsey, Boston Consulting, Roland Berger, they have different requirements. Uh, than a specialized IT consultant like maybe Accenture, where you do a, a IT programming. And if you want to gain specialized IT knowledge in your master, then I would recommend that you do not do an MBA, then better do a master for of informatics or whatever. Uh, in general, the general management MBAs we offer, this is very helpful to make a career as a management consultant. Yeah. Uh, because that's exactly what what what, what we teach, um, but it depends very much um, on, on on the consulting. Ronald Berger has totally different uh, criteria for than Accenture, and so it's hard to answer it generally. But if you want to specialize on IT, don't do an MBA, do a master for IT management. 
if I if I may add one thing to this, um, one of my good friends now in this program is actually an IT consultant, and he chose uh, the MBA to understand his clients better. So I don't know exactly what the background of the question is, just giving you this perspective. Um, he is an IT consultant and he chose to do the MBA to understand his clients better. So if that's uh, the case for you, it might work as well in the MBA. Um, otherwise, of course, what the professor said is uh, very true. Okay, perfect. Very good advice. Thank you to both. Uh, next question is now more cohort demography related. What is the age range of students? Maybe Marcus, share with yes. us. <laughs> um, I'm much younger than I look probably. Um, no, so we have, uh, I think the youngest guy in our program is around 21, 22, something like that. And the oldest guy should be around 40, 44, something like that. So there is certainly a range of 20 years. I would say uh, the majority of the course is around the 30s. That's mm -hmm. that's what I would uh, would would I call it? Yes, we have younger people. Um, we have a little bit of like uh, the 40s, but all in all, it doesn't really show. I would say because um, it it it's more like a a, a cohesive group that we are um, and uh, of course with more life experience uh, you can contribute a, a few other things that you might not when you're younger but all in all I think we, we have a good range Perfect so We have the, the, the 20 year old uh, IT student from Bangalore, India which is the, have, has done two years practical work, just software programming Yes, and we have also the 45 year old uh, purchasing manager from Iran with 20 years plus experience yes. responsible for millions of, of, of dollars budget for purchasing volume mm -hmm. and since I do this since more than 20 years I've seen the, the oldest participant was 55 so far okay. well, cool. great <laughs> thanks for historical insights as well here, <laughs> perfect uh, okay next question Hi, and thanks for the webinar. Sorry if I missed that, but as I understood, any background is welcome, right? And can the lack of experience be somehow compensated? So it's right, any kind of academic background, but it needs to be an academic background. So from a, a bachelor's degree, minimum from a from a renowned or from a well-known or official uh, university. So the, the, the institute you do it has to have a kind of university status. Uh, any degree and for the experience a minimum is two years average is about four years i would say four, four to six years in our university mm -hmm. and we have for part-time students who do for example the bachelor in business while they are working and they they, they, they are gather experience before the academic graduation we have a we have it's only one year experience mm -hmm. we need but this is mandatory mm -hmm. uh and uh, I would say the more experience you have, the better it is, because the better the students are, the better the program gets. Very simple. Okay. Again, maybe if I can join a few words. Um, for me, it was certainly a different experience than my bachelor's. My bachelor's I did right after my A-levels um, and my MBA now after six years of working, um, which is a, a different experience that I, that I enjoy thoroughly because um, I've seen how work goes, so I can apply certain things. But of course, um, if you might not have six, seven years of experience or more, um, you will benefit from your fellow students. Um, we have we have small things that are not even directly related to a course, but how to give presentations, how to talk to people, how to negotiate. You will be learning from fellow students uh, and their experience. So. Yeah, the program itself will give you experience as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And just building on that issue of you mentioned bachelor's and academic requirement, there's a question. Is it still possible to apply with 180 ECTS bachelors? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, if you have the practical experience, uh, that's possible. Okay, great. And just what Marcus mentioned, there's a question regarding on that point. So Marcus, you mentioned about the gap. So it is not a it is not a problem for the program, but do I have to show why I had this gap, and also how is it going to back going to back to the study mode after working so for so long? All right, uh, gap between bachelor's and master's. I assume that's yep. that's a question probably, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So 
of course, when you have worked for a few years, you will have to adjust a little bit uh, to academic life again. Um, it is certainly something that you might not be used to anymore, that you might have to sit down, open a book, uh, read up a few things. Um, but as I said, it's so practice oriented, this program, that if you work in projects in, in I don't know, stuff like that at work, um, it will feel familiar. Um, and like I said, the first semester, the introduction is, uh, in my opinion, so well done that you will be able to get back into this study rhythm. And of course, um, classes are um, in the evening, occasionally also on the weekend. Um, so of course, you have your normal work life. And then in the evening, you go to the courses and uh, you get to study there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clear? Um, yes, and also a related question to what you were, were discussing before. Uh, are most of the students currently employed when they are studying at the program? We have two, two, two groups. One are the, the students who are already working in Germany and want to do a part-time MBA. Mm -hmm. and the other are the students who come to us from outside, from abroad, to study here. And so the typical for them is they're not working. They, I say always, if you want to work in Germany, that's no problem, but you need to speak the language. And so they mm -hmm. normally spend the first year of studies with learning uh, the language German. We offer, we have our own language center at our university and the German classes are free of charge for enrolled students. So they can really uh, learn mm -hmm. German. And when the German is good enough, I would say B2 level, they can apply with companies where we, we cooperate and they can do internships. And this is very attractive for the employees because they pay you a little bit less. They can hire and fire working students easier. They don't have to ask the working council like, like a normal assignment. And it's also a, a kind of getting to know each other. And very, very often yes. from the internship, there comes a, a, a final uh, permanent assignment afterwards. And so or, or there comes out a master thesis project done with a company. And so it's not clear um, to say that's this and that's the things are going. And, and many of the students from abroad come to us and can you help me to get a job, uh, a good internship? Or they, they just ask the, 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 their fellow students who work already in Germany. Exactly. And they, they help them in. And don't forget, we do this is 20 years. So we have an alumni club with 20 years experience. And we have even alumni who send their son or their daughter to us to study. So uh, we must do something right if they send their, their children to us. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. Um, we have this currently where like, People like students like me who are in a position to hand out internships and, and student work positions. Uh, we have that actually right now that three, four other students uh, got jobs through their fellow students, more or less. Oh, nice. That's very valuable information. Thanks both of you for providing also regarding the opportunity of studying Germany, because it's also important to know that there is an opportunity to do that yeah. for, for the career options. And then this networking part, also very crucial. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, now uh, about the housing option, I guess this is for foreigners more. Uh, are there any housing options from the o OHM? And I mean our own, your own offers. So of course we have a list of, of student student hostels from the uh, students associations here in Nuremberg. Around about 40, 50,000 students are studying in Nuremberg with several universities. We also have a list of private landlords. And so we can assist the students, but we don't do the job. So we don't have units, hostels on our, our campus ourselves where you just uh, give for rent. You have to care yourself, but we assist you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And regarding, again, going back to this working is uh, issue. So the question is, but it is not possible to work full-time for internationals, right? Or are there any some specifics of this study program that allow. So this is more a visa related issue. If you would like to please address this question. Yeah. So with a student visa in Germany, you are allowed to work 120 full days a year or on average 20 hours of work week. That's a limitation. If you do more than that, you have to get social assurance. You have to get uh, all these social security insurances, which cost a lot of money, uh, both for the employers as for yourself. And so that's why it's also attractive for employees to have working studies. So there's a certain limit, but normally it's big enough uh, because don't forget you have a program to study. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. 
Okay, great. Um, regarding the payment, is it all in one go or? Okay. It has to be paid in four installments. So the first is about 3750 or something. Normally before the semester starts, three, four weeks before you get an invoice for the next semester. In case you need to study more than the, the regular three, four semesters, you don't pay more. Yeah, so it's no extra tuition fees. And if there are problems in payment, we always say, don't wait until there's a fire burning. When the smoke is coming up, talk to us, and then we find a way and a solution to, to, to make a later payment or in, other in, installments like that. So we are a state university. We work on a non-profit basis, but we have to cover our expenses. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm doing a personal interview with any candidate. It's about 40, 50 minutes about the motivation of the candidate. And it's not a selling talk. It's an advisory talk. And it mm -hmm. may well happen that I tell somebody it's a better idea to do something else in our MBA. Mm -hmm. Because we want to have satisfied students and it, it must make sense for them yeah. to go with us. Great. Thank you, Professor. Um, okay, so next question is, as you said, hopefully, I wonder what is the percentage of students that actually do manage to graduate? In the 20 years plus I do this, I can remember three or four students who not made it. Okay. So we have a lot of students who get in problem, mm -hmm. but then we take care. Mm -hmm. It makes makes sense to have a personal talk with the student. Say, hey, what's the problem? Mm. What's going on? Yeah. If somebody fails the first time, I do I do nothing. I just offer a repetition exam at the beginning of next semester. The second fail, I maybe have a talk, and so so really take care and try to help the students to find out what the problem is. But let's be very clear: you have to deliver some performance to pass, mm -hmm. and this. That's that's a hard the hard uh, limit. Yeah, we're not giving away the MBA for free, and so we help students to get better. To so, for example, we hire a tutor. So I had a student from India; she had problems. So we ask another student from India. We paid him that he can teach her uh, that uh, in the mother tongue that you can uh, overcome the barriers. So these are the kind of things we do. Then we really take care for our students. Nice, great. Great things are being said. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, next question. Um, Marcus, it's for you personally. Yes. First of all, Marcus, there's a thank you for you for your comprehensive yes. student insights. <laughs> and then, uh, hi, Marcus, how heavy is the study week in general? Just your experience. Different question. Uh, difficult question. Um, well, um, I personally uh, look for perfection. So I am willing to go the extra mile um, to get the best possible result. Um, if you personally are happy with the 90%, 80% result, that's a different approach. So my answer will be based on uh, trying to achieve perfection. Um, you will have weeks where it's uh, just the classes that you go to and it's relatively relaxed. Um, then you have weeks where there is a deadline, maybe you need to finish a presentation, you need to hand in a paper. Uh, naturally, these weeks will be a bit more stressful or the weeks in advance will be a bit more stressful. Um, me personally working, I am in the lucky position that I can adjust my work schedule a little bit, I can be a bit more flexible. So um, if I know that there is some exam coming up, some deadline, I adjust my work week to it. Um, if you don't work full time, uh, I'm just going to be like quite direct here. If you don't work full time, I think uh, you should not be concerned at all. Like you're studying, you're used to studying. Um, if you're complaining about the program and you're not working full time, yeah. Um, if you're working full time, uh, you will have to adjust a little bit. And, and uh, of course, you will maybe not be able to watch three hours of Netflix every night anymore if you want good grades. Um, but again, this whole program is not designed for you to fail. This program is designed for you to succeed. Um, and as the professor said, um, like I said, for example, uh, papers that you have to write or presentations you have to make, you usually make them in a group. Um, so that's also a whole different experience. Um, not saying that this is like uh, easy and uh, like you can free write. But um, that group experience is usually like you pull yourself together. You're like, OK, let's get this done. 
uh, let's work on this together. Um, in my opinion, it's definitely possible uh, and no one has had a breakdown in our course and, and said, I cannot do it anymore. Um, yeah, there are days where you're like, ooh, this is tough, but it's not in a way where you would ever regret choosing the program. <laughs> maybe if I add some, may add something. Yeah. Yes, it happens that we have students, maybe from abroad, who come here and think, oh, nice, everything is free. I'm for my own. I have lots of money for my deposit and I can enjoy, enjoy life. And they just a little bit neglect studying and preparing for exam and then at the first semester and they fail in the exams and then they have to change their mind and if they don't do it by themselves we have to do it yeah and we have to be very clear on that and uh, this happens but then they change their mind and then they succeed yeah and and, and if not we, we ask what's the problem uh, and, and so we uh, I mentioned that already yeah great thank you so uh, does the university also have a business network in Denmark? In Denmark? I'm sure we have alumni living in Denmark, but I don't know the names now. Um, what do you mean by a business network? So while we don't have a partner university, I know personally a lecturer from us who is also giving lectures in Denmark. Um, but so the answer, an institutionalized network with the, with, where we cooperate, we, the answer is no. We have once a year study week where we go to China and we have once a year week where we go to the United States, but there's no trip regularly to Denmark yet. Okay, clear. Is it an NC program? If yes, what are the key criteria by which you choose the applicants? Is it a GPA? Is it, yeah. What no, are, what? It, it, it's... Basically, uh, on the application and a personal talk, because we think this is much much better than having a uh, at, uh, any any grade, uh, any any test or whatever GPA. I mean, yes, the examiner will say your grade should be above average. So I will talk with you about your academic performance, and if it's not so good, I will ask you why you know it and what's happened and what was the problem. And uh, I will talk with you about your career so far what your experience is, I will ask you about your understanding of management. And I, I also will ask you about what your expectations are and what your motivation for the MBA is and what you will not do next. And so we decide jointly uh, whether it's a good idea to, to join us. Okay. And, uh, therefore, yes, academic background is important. There are some formal criteria like a, a bachelor of minimum 100, 180 uh, ECTS and also uh, has to be from a high un a university. And you need this experience thing, and you need to talk English to be proved, for example, by a TOEIC, LTS, TOEFL, whatever. And uh, the rest is personal mm -hmm. cool. and individual, which is very important, I think. Okay. Uh, I think it was also mentioned several times. You mentioned uh, students from different countries. And then the question is, how international is a typical cohort? Would you say the share of what? what is the share of international students, so to say? As I said, an average, I would say, Easily 80%. Oh, okay. I mean, it mixes. For example, I have a student from, from India or China or Iran coming to us for studying. And I have students from Pakistan working for Siemens already, having studied at, uh, in Aachen. And they also are here. So are they now German or are they international? And I have, of course, people with a Turkish background being born in Germany. They, they are Germans, but they have also an international background. So, so the, the, the borders are mixed, and so it's not so easy to say. I would say it's above 80% from abroad. Okay, clear. So the, the current group that I am with, I just checked. Um, so people born in Germany um, is 6%. So 94% are not born in Germany in the course that I am currently. Okay, clear. Great. Um, and yeah, one more time. Did you mention that classes are in the evening? Yeah. So it, it's that's because it's also has to be doable for people working. So the classes start at six o'clock p.m. and they finish at nine fifteen, which is long enough after a long work work day. And uh, I mean, you should know that those who are working and doing parallel program like Markus Ratzisberger, they have not a job working from nine to five. They have normally a job. Where they deliver more than that and they are ambitious and so um six is 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 sometimes already also not, not so easy to accomplish they have to leave at 5 30 or whatever um 
So that's an evening. And so for the students from abroad who are, do not work here yet, they take the time for studying German and for do, preparing for the lectures. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, there's a request. Could you write in the chat the LinkedIn, for example, Marcus uh, and another link, any, any data information, contact yeah. information would be nice to write in the chat. And before you're doing that, there is a question. Frequently, I enc encounter situations when German professors question my desire to do a second master. Is it also the same with you, <laughs> Professor? <laughs> no, it's very easy. It depends on your case. I don't know you yet. We have to have a talk. At first, I will see your application. I see your background and everything. So last week, I had a talk with a German lady working uh, in her own, lo own logistics company. As a as head of head head of uh, um, marketing, mm -hmm. and uh, she was asking, and the outcome of uh, the talk was that it's better for her to do a master in logistics than doing an MBA. Okay. And so I recommended her for doing a master in logistics. So, but I don't have a a predefined attitude or something. I mean, the the individual human counts, and what's good for you, and and what uh, we find out, and what your expectations are. But I think it's it's totally nonsense to have a general attitude such as if you have a master, you don't do another one. I mean, they thought we have many students already having a master, mm -hmm. a master in electronic engineering, a master yeah. in social sciences or whatever. It mm -hmm. makes very much sense for them to do an MBA. Perfect. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, I enjoyed the presentation a lot but to be honest i enjoyed the, this q a even more because they were really nice question and very important information also provided uh, through your answers very comprehensive answers thanks a lot for that dear attendees if you have any further questions follow-up questions marcus has just shared also the chat in the link uh, the link in the chat sorry for the uh, linkedin profiles also uh, you will also be provided with a presentation with some uh, contact details you can also find it so you can get in touch uh, with the representatives and then you can see that they're ready to help and they are really nice to get in touch actually in terms of helping you to decide what is good for you or not what I could understand and I, I think you also have this takeaway also one of the main takeaways from this presentation and from this webinar if you have any general questions regarding studying in Germany of course you can get it get, can get in touch with us regarding the visa issue blocked account issue uniasis and stuff like this we're also always here to assist you in that regard that being said, once again, thanks a lot to our guests, to our attendees. Hope to see you on our future webinars as well. Take care and bye-bye. See you bye -bye. soon, maybe. Yeah. Bye. And thanks, Mr. Atzisberg. Thanks for your... Yeah, no problem.